NHI means no humans involved. It's an old East Coast police term where they don't do a, a proper investigation on transients such as prostitutes or drug addicts that live in the streets. So the, the whole idea is that um, no humans involved is that it's just um, they don't warrant a uh, proper investigation for people who live in the streets or who are prostitutes because they don't consider that to be, um, they, they feel they, they, they got what they deserved. She was on the west end of a, a dirt turnout off of Sunrise Highway in San Diego County, the east part of San Diego County. Uh, she was next to a brushy area. Uh, she was covered up with some type of a garment which uh, investigation revealed was a, uh, uh, a long party dress. Uh, she was nude. Uh, her undergarments had been cut off as well as her dress and placed on top of her nude body. A gentleman walking a dog, uh, the dog alerted to what, was, what, what the dog had sensed and uh, the individual that was walking his dog uh, found uh, the uh, decedent uh, notified the sheriff's office and then I was called out. There was indication, uh, confirmation as a matter of fact, of what is known as a brush out, which means that uh, the uh, perpetrator or perpetrators had used a brush from uh, bushes and uh, uh, plant life around there to essentially obliterate any shoe impressions or tire impressions around the scene. Uh, there's talk about uh, uh, Ronald Porter had, uh, you know, former Marine, that there was Marine training. All Marines got trained in brushing out crime scenes. What do you make of that? It is absolute baloney. Marines are not trained uh, to uh, brush out anything unless they are in a specific assignment where that might be of some necessity. Does that indicate that a law enforcement uh, person might be involved in the crime? It doesn't indicate uh, that a law enforcement person was involved, it does, but it certainly leads in a, 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 a reasonable uh, and well-trained homicide investigator to look in that particular direction, and particularly when you find out the type of a, a lifestyle that the decedent may have been uh, involved in. There's new information in one of the most notorious unsolved murders in San Diego County. A new book is out detailing the 1985 murder of Donna Gentili. News 8's David Godfredson spoke to the author, who is Gentili's first cousin. I really, really honestly believe that the law enforcement is complicit in her crime. Did a San Diego police officer kill 22-year-old Donna Gentili? Her first cousin wants to know, 33 years after Gentili's naked body was found off Sunrise Highway. Her neck was broken, she had been strangled, and rocks were stuffed down her throat. If someone is found with rocks being stuffed in their mouth, it is a symbolism of you're a snitch, you've talked. Donna Gentili talked all right publicly. He said that he was going to turn Lieutenant Carl Black into the captain for having relations with me. She was a prostitute who testified before the Civil Service Commission five weeks before she was killed about inappropriate relationships she had with two San Diego cops. Well, he was over my apartment a few times. Um, I had sexual contact with him. Officer Larry Averick and Lieutenant Carl Black denied the allegations but both of them were fired in the wake of the scandal, although Black was later reinstated. You have a girl who gets a lieutenant fired. A lieutenant is a big deal for a woman to get fired in 1985. In a new book, The Donna Gentili Story, author Anita DeFrancesco describes the events leading up to her cousin's murder. There is new evidence in the book, like this letter Gentili wrote to her family from the Las Colinas jail just two months before she was killed. My life is in danger when I get out, the letter said, literally predicting her murder. She said she was in danger and she, she begged to stay in jail a little longer because she felt that they were waiting for her. The book also makes public for the first time the coroner's toxicology report showing that cocaine was in Gentili's system and DNA was found in three different areas of her body. Back in 2007, a sheriff's homicide lieutenant told News 8, DNA found on a prostitute's body can be problematic. If a person is a prostitute, uh, DNA can be found on them, which wouldn't necessarily mean 
that the DNA belonged to the perpetrator of the murder. After her murder, detectives combed through Gentili's apartment and later obtained search warrants seeking DNA samples from her regular customers. Some investigators said convicted killer and serial rapist Ronald Porter was a suspect. He's currently in prison, so it's safe to say they already have his DNA sample. Does that mean he's been ruled out as a suspect? In Ronald Porter's series of crimes, murder, rape, kidnapping, attempted murder, uh, Donna Gentile would have been one, if he did it, would have been one of his first uh, victims. There's, by my count, one, two, three, four of his other victims where there was no brush out of the crime scene subsequent to Donna Gentile. What does that tell you? That there was no evidence of Mr. Porter uh, being involved. Uh, I'm not here to uh, endorse his uh, innocence regarding other cases, but there's absolutely no evidence of him being tied to the Gentile case. Okay, uh, gravel in her mouth. Larry Averick says putting the gravel in the mouth of a rape victim is fairly common. He's seen it in other crimes, and it's done to keep the victim from screaming. What do you make of that? It's a crock. Why? Because it doesn't happen in that, uh, as frequently as that. I've investigated virtually hundreds of sexual assault cases, mm -hmm. and it is very, very rare. Um, and it's very rare, as a matter of fact, as far as homicide victims are concerned. Having rocks and, or, or gravel or some such thing tapped down into some, to an individual's windpipe is very, very unusual, and it is very rare. I don't care what Mr. Averick says. The gravel wasn't just uh, uh, something that was basically forced into her mouth. It was literally tamped down her throat. The cause of death was asphyxia, even though her neck had been fractured at the second cervical vertebrae. Uh, the problem is there is no evidence uh, of a police involvement, although she was on the payroll the payroll for the Internal Affairs Division of the San Diego Police Department, informing them of police officers. She was targeted. Is that the reason she was murdered? I don't know, but it certainly is a consideration. Do you think her case will ever be solved? That's a very, very difficult question to answer. Uh, I would uh, uh, my suspicion is that had that stupid task force not been formed, if it had remained in the, uh, under the jurisdiction of the San Diego Sheriff's Department, uh, it's a pretty good likelihood that it would have been solved. Anybody might be the killer of Donna Gentile. There's no evidence to present at court to convince a jury beyond a reasonable doubt that anybody did it. Certainly you consider everything you have, uh, but the fact that she had testified against Larry Averick certainly made him a potential suspect, along with other police officers that either had been involved with her or were going to go to internal affairs. But we had no evidence, no physical evidence, eyewitness evidence, statements linking any police officers or anybody else to Donna Gentile. The fact that a prostitute has DNA of someone or multiple people in her or on her helps some, but it's not like you know, the PTA president having DNA uh, on her. At the Gentile scene, I believe, from what's been reported, is the ground was uh, cleared, kind of like cowboys used to do to hide their tracks. Um, that was not done at the subsequent uh, events. There's got to be an explanation for that if Ronald Porter is the one that did Donna Gentile. Uh, I remember he was picking up hitchhikers, not prostitutes, ladies who were wanted to go east, who wanted to go east on I-8. He'd work his way behind them and would choke them out with his arm. Uh, a sleeper hold is what I called it. My victims were hitchhikers. The best we know is that Donna Gentile was probably working the streets when she got picked up. There's a world of difference in what a hitchhiker looks like on a street corner trying to catch a ride and what a prostitute looks like. 
She was up on El Cajon Boulevard. Uh, the girls in my case were scattered throughout the county. Uh, they all wanted to go east. They were hitchhiking to uh, back to families, to Arizona, to Florida, uh, various places east. So they willingly got in the car and willingly drove with him miles and miles and miles. A prostitute who's working at, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks an activity is not going to want to go all that far. Every one of my victims survived the attack. They were choked out with the arm. Nothing was put in their mouth. They were not strangled. They were choked out with the arm, an arm bar uh, attack. And they went down unconscious. They all woke up, survived the attack, and they all were walking for help, including the murder victim. Donna Gentile, from what has been reported, uh, that didn't happen. So many of the factors are not the same. Doesn't mean he didn't do it, but it doesn't mean I, I can prove it. There's a lot of maybes. E anybody can come up with maybes. Defense attorneys can come up with a ton of them. And those are the maybes that we have to eliminate before we charge somebody with murder. Currently, the San Diego Sheriff's Department won't talk about evidence in the case, like a bite mark found on Gentile's body and one of her earrings missing from the crime scene. I really don't think a serial killer did this. Now, 33 years later, the woman who wrote the book on Donna Gentile's life and death still is hoping for justice. I think someone does know, and I think it's being kept a secret. David Gottfriedson, News 8. The remainder of Gentile's autopsy remains sealed. Our family wants the autopsy unsealed. This is a message from my whole family, that, that we really want this autopsy revealed. We want to know what we, we want. We're entitled as a family. We're entitled as a family to know what's going on with her autopsy. Maybe, maybe they can reopen the case and start to reinvestigate this because it's still alive in a lot of people's hearts and especially our family, because we're not sitting well with this all these years because of the way she was murdered. I really, really honestly believe that the law enforcement is complicit in her, in her crime, or at least they had something to do with it. May, maybe not them, but maybe they had something to do with it. Other police officers could have said, oh my God, if she could take a lieutenant down, what else can she do? And this was 1985, and she was a, a young prostitute. If you're taking a lieutenant down, that's a big deal. And that, even today, in today's times, with all the police officers and everyone going down for all this profiling stuff that we have going on, I think that when they heard a lieutenant went down, even though Black did get his job back, I feel that maybe that put fear in others that may not have been doing anything wrong, and maybe they thought, hey, maybe she's reporting on me. So anyone could have wanted her out of the way, so to speak.